Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us and IndieWrestling.network for your independent wrestling entertainment. Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Production services by Sidekick Media Services. And listeners like you, supporting us at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Hey everybody, it is the Wrestling Mayhem Show over 830 Tuesdays we've been talking about professionalized wrestling. I'm Mike Sorgat Sorgatron on the Twitter, and this is something different this week. I am actually currently, if all things have gone well, sitting in San Diego, I don't know, maybe on the beach, maybe at the zoo, I don't know, we'll see. Um, I'll have some stories, maybe I found some professionalized wrestling, I don't know. Uh, either way is I know I'm not doing the show this week, and I wanted to make sure we do have something on the feed for everybody so i got i'm hanging with bradley an executive producer here in the patreon bradley hello hello and wicked's hanging out too taking a little nap behind him so there, there's that too there's so a, there's a dog behind me <laughs> there's a little doggy behind me so so of course we won't be commenting on whatever the news of the week is whether it be cm punk showing up on monday night raw or uh or or uh, uh tony khan uh submitting himself to rehab for too much cocaine whatever that news story is of the week that we are completely missing commenting on right now don't worry about it because we have a show for you ignore all that ignore all the news that's really happening right now in the world um but anyways uh, i don't know i i, I thought it'd be a good opportunity if we kind of looked back and when we uh, bradley we'll get your your kind of response to some of these um because it has been a nutty freaking year of course um you know as we're recording this um we're i, I we, this is let's, let's just say it's two aew dynamites ago i don't even we don't even know what's happening tonight um i think i think we've been through the first round of the uh the grand slam championship um tournament right so and we've had the scrum apocalypse of cm punk and the evps uh we're you know what about a month in just past the first pay-per-view castle uh the clash of the castle with triple h in charge nxt just revealed a black and gold logo whatever that means we'll find out or we found out by now who knows uh the returns of takeovers just got announced with halloween havoc um so i i thought it would be i you know you know we we and, and i think we just forget because there's just so much coming at us, right? Um, and, and I thought it was interesting to kind of look back and just see, you know, I, I remember in April us talking about what a crazy year this has been, right, for announcements and everything, right, Bradley? Absolutely. It's This has been a year. <laughs> this has been uh, all kinds of stuff that you never thought would happen. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, sorry, taking us up there. Um so, so uh, you know, let's go. Let's go past first. Kind of the sad ones, of course. Scott Hall passed away this year. I keep forgetting that he passed away. It keeps like I, I was listening to a DDP interview the other other week or other day uh, or weeks ago at this point, I guess. Um, you know, and I, I forgot it, it. It just, it just, it. You know, and that was like that was a big thing for I don't know a week, I guess. Right. This is just a bad year for the social media uh, attention span. Oh, just in general, right? But I mean, but that's what the, that's what it is. It's a news cycle and everything, you know. Yeah. There, 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 there's nothing, not been, uh, 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 there's not been a lack of things to write about for sure, right? Absolutely. So, uh, another bad news. Well, another bad news. Big E breaks his neck. We know now that he probably might. Like uh, last I heard, he's healed up. He's good for day to day, but they want to look at him in a year for wrestling. Mm -hmm. That was a wild thing. He was on the come up. It looked like, I think they, I think they were positioning him for maybe a, you know, going for the championship or something at that point when it, when he got injured. If I do, if I do, he was in, uh, it was, uh, going to be new day versus the ruffian. What are the ruffians? The Seamus and the brutes, the brutes, the brutes, the brawling brutes. I think they are now. Yeah. 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 That was where they were going with this. And there was probably going to be the WrestleMania match. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And yeah, you know. that was that was leading into that, and then you know we had a version of that match, I think, at WrestleMania, if I recall. Um, you know, obviously the Triple H situation um, early on, it seemed like he was out. You know, what we were, were a year into, as we talked about on. Um, you know, as of this recording, this week, oh, you know, he, the, he had the, something happen to him. He didn't know if he was going to live. Yeah, absolutely. That that heart thing. That this is a story from last year, but still, he's been kind of recovering um, uh, for much of the early part of this year, and not mm-hmm. terribly involved in day to day WWE action, right? 
And, and then he not only does he get over it, but now he's in charge of uh, whatever does WWE he, does on TV. <laughs> Everything, basically. <laughs> Everything that's important at WWE, he's in charge he, of. Well, well, now he's in charge of creative. Well, that's, he, he's not, is that, not the most important thing in WWE, what is on TV, because everything else comes off of that. It, the person that uh, runs that, the two, mm-hmm. the two people, that's the most important position. They mm-hmm. they are the ones that say, Triple H, yes, you can do that. Okay, okay. but he's yes, a- yes, Triple H, you can go back to black and gold. And that, <laughs> that, that's okay. You can do that. Yes, yes, Triple H, we can have more Latin and, Latin and crossbones, uh, yes. Latin and skulls. You can bring, <laughs> back, bring back cross. That's okay. Let's yeah, do yeah. that. Yeah, that, that, yeah. That's fine. That's fine. Um, looking back uh, again earlier this year, of course, Ric Flair returns to the ring for one final match. That wasn't terribly long ago. <laughs> um, well, he, it was brought up. <laughs> there was there was a TikTok where somebody's interview, interviewing Liv Morgan at the Clash of the Castles, like you know, media stuff, and they're like, "Did you watch Ric Flair's match?" And she kind of like, "Yes, I did." What do you think? Silence. <laughs> 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 you don't want to bear because it's Ric Flair, right? So. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's well, been, well, half your bosses are Ric Flair. I mean, I mean Triple H is a Ric Flair guy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Sean Michaels is a Ric Flair guy. You don't want to say something you don't to, dispar- well, you, you still, but generally you don't want to disparage a legend like that, you right. know, on media. Cause now, you know, the dirt sheet sets a headline. Liv Morgan says Ric Flair sucks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, dark side of the ring has already disparaged Ric Flair. plenty. Absolutely. So, you know, what, Absolutely. What are you going to do? That was a thing this year was in it was uh tommy dreamer getting thrown under the cancel bus for uh the the plane ride from hell dark side of the ring i uh, think that was this year yeah uh boy that's it's, it's tough to tell but uh yeah he got thrown under for a while and the, just him just acting like what rick flair did on the airplane just oh it's just mm-hmm. boys being boys it's just yeah yeah no, it was it's not he, he had a certain point but it was definitely worded in the worst way possible yeah um so and of course it's something he probably recorded like a year ago that that came that caught up with him. So, um, but, but he's not canceled. He's no, 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 he's, no, no, you know, no, no, people, no, 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 no. All the wrestlers are still talking I would say momentar- to momentarily canceled. Like ah, you know, I think he was let go from Impact uh, 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 over it. So, um, he's, he's not back. I don't know. There's some picture of him at Disney World. I don't know if that tells no. you. There's it a picture of him at okay. Disney World. Nobody else is there. He wasn't banned from Disney World for saying something crappy on Vice, I don't think. So the dog's okay. on the move, by the way. Uh, so <laughs> he's he's very active. He went for a, a walk. To, he, went to, he went for a walk to a new place today. So Okay. Um, <clears throat> let's see what else we got here. The early MJF quote-unquote pipe bomb. I'm still not convinced this was not a work. Well, it, it, it was a work because he's back now. He is back now, but that doesn't mean it, 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 it might. That, have, that doesn't prove that it wasn't a work then. Yeah. But I still, I would still believe that he's been part of the company. That's been the plan the whole time. Oh, I, I, I believe that I up mean, until it, the scrum that made everything it, fall apart. It, it could have uh, started with a, a, a rumor, and somebody says, "Oh, wait, there's this rumor out there. Let's let's mm-hmm. play with that. Let's go with it." Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I play it up a little bit. I, I, I it, it, the only thing is if the only thing that that sticks in my craw a little bit is if it was um, a work the entire time, the Wardlow match being so flattened by it. Um, I listened to a recent interview with him where he talked about how that was supposed to be a big moment, and just he was just so pissed off about it. So uh, I could, it all makes sense to me. I mean, mm-hmm. if he's not going to be back for a while, then put over Wardlow, and everybody else is putting over Wardlow. Nobody's nobody's even giving him much well, of a you fight can, right now. You can put him over, but the the way do you remember how the match went? Like it was just like a two minute squash. It was. Yeah. Most so, of, most of Wardlow's matches have been two minute squashes. This is people, true. This so. is true. So. Uh, it works for me. I'm not going to go through this whole thing saying everything AEW works for me. No, 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 no. But that works for me. Nick, Nick Khan. No, no, wrong Khan. Tony Khan announcing Tony Khan. he has purchased Ring of Honor, I believe, right before WrestleMania, wasn't it? It was. And and he did the same look after he uh, on the scrum after he said he wasn't to take that crap anymore. He just, he, I think every once in a while he'll say something saying, I just bought this. And he's looking around. And he's Come looking at around. me! Come at me, bro! He's looking around. Maybe he's looking for reactions. You know, are you he reacting? is an uh, overexcited uh, fan. He, that, that, yeah. That's what that re- reaction is. Like he, he's somebody. Listen, we enthusiastic Bradley. What both of us and you more so on tape mm-hmm. um, have 
had those moments around professional wrestling where we cannot control our emotions. Uh, okay. I will agree with that. Yes. I will agree it's on tape with me. Yes. Yes, it is. This is, by the way, you look nice in a cowboy hat. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Um, the um, cowboy Paul giveth and Alexander taketh away. That is true. That is true. Um, a lot of cowboy hatting. The, the noir was rocking the 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 cowboy look a few weeks ago. Um, anyways, uh, yeah. So so the, the, the I love the Ring of Honor thing. You know, I, I, it's it's weird that we don't have separate TV. We've had an, uh, what two pay per views now this year. Of course, controversy around the the uh, Jonathan Gresham kind of reaction to drop into Claudio. Um, but still, like I'm loving that. You know, most recently, as of this recording, we had a pure championship match headline. Um, uh, Dynamite. We mm-hmm. had a, a you know a world championship match both on I believe Dark and on Rampage in the last couple of weeks. Um, like it's there, it's present. Um, we're still bringing in Caprice and and Bobby Cruz around these to keep the brand alive with it. Obviously, we're in like this kind of in between space before they do get TV. Something is in the works in negotiation. You know, hopefully we'll get it announced soon because we can't do this forever. Um, I but, don't think they're planning to do it no, forever. No, no. It, it, it's got to take a while to get a TV show going. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. You know, um, but but they're, like... they're making the titles seem important. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe the women's one could the could use a little more than it's getting. Well, but... I, and I think that's, I think Martinez may be injured. So they, they've, you know, they've, oh, they've, they've have an interim, for a interim uh, champion. Let's just I, I know. I, well, Ring of Honor doesn't have a history of that. So I think I just want, putting what I, away. I want is I want an interim women's champion mm-hmm. and I want that person to get injured. And then mm-hmm. we have an interim, interim women's <laughs> champion. That, um, that's a, you know, a the, double interim, double I, a, a double, a, 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 a double I women's uh, ring of honor women's champion. And then everybody comes back for a three way match. And then you know, you there we blow, go. Blow it off. There we there. go. Oh, it's like the UK. Uh, or, or maybe you have an interim, 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 interim the champion. Interim and, and the woman that wins just has to pick up like ten belts and hold them all up. Like I, I, I won. And that's part of the challenge. Like that is, is that the bird that's the burden that goes with it. If you it, can't right? pick them up, then you can't win the match. No, no, absolutely. That's like that's just like who can carry this over the line, kind of thing. <laughs> who can put eleven belts up on up a ladder? Uh, it, it's getting to be like let's make a deal or something. Like right. That. Uh, um. No. Uh. Beat the clock, but it's only got. So as of this recording, we don't know what's going to go on with the EVPs and CM Punk. It sounds like they're going to be out for a while. And Kenny Omega, as of today, is just hanging out in Sega of uh, of Japan. But they was, they're doing stuff they were scheduled to do anyways. Um, so this yeah, is who, just... who was he eating with? Was that uh, Ibushi? Was it Ibushi? Was he hanging with Ibushi? It, I, I saw Makes pictures sense. of him with some. Uh, I, I thought it was Ibushi or something mm. like that, and, the, and, and they're just sharing their food. They're, he's, 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 they're, they're sharing each other's plates with each oh, other. That, that seems about right. Um, yeah. Comings and goings, you know, uh, Claudia, of course, comes to AEW. Big fanfare. That was huge to see him at Fort mm-hmm. North. That was really awesome. And, at, you know, you may say grabbing the br- brass ring that he was he deserved all this time, right? So, Yeah, but uh, that, I mean, this year – with many people and I might be I probably am one of them uh the honeymoon phase is over with AEW okay yeah uh, that's the, definitely some a of case. the warts yeah. are coming out yeah and some yeah. Of, and uh with me one of them is Jonathan Gresham I would have mm-hmm. loved the, how many matches would you've loved to see at AEW mm-hmm. with Jonathan Gresham mm-hmm. br- br- uh, Brian Danielson mm-hmm. and uh you know CM Punk mm-hmm. um Adam Page, Kenny Omega, you know, if, if he got to, uh, back, there are so so many good matches you could have had with that guy, and uh, you know, uh, it sounds like I don't want to say obviously, it sounds like communication problems caused mm-hmm. some problems here with some other things. He wasn't presented too strong as Ring of Honor champion, you know. They they, they had him be one of the people that big giant Indian guy uh, stomped on. Mm-hmm. What was it? Sa- uh, the, the the guy that's hanging out with Jay Lethal. Yeah, I, I can never remember his name either. So, Satin, um, you know. yeah, but, but we let's not butcher the name. <laughs> yeah, very very fair. Uh, but but no, he, 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 in, and I I I still just think. I don't know if there's anything explicitly wrong. It's not proven to me that there's anything uh, explicitly wrong with that. Other than there's several people that have problems with the dealings in 
AEW. Um, but a lot of people have problems with the dealings in WWE, in mm-hmm. the indie I work whatever weekend. Uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> like, listen, yeah. like I hear the same conversation across. All, and I, I feel that, and I've said this multiple times, so this is a pre recorded version of this. Um, you know, I just feel that just because somebody um, has a problem, bounces out, unless something very explicitly horrible happened, like the, say, CM Punk situation, right? Mm. Um, and the backstage brawl, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, like, unless something explicitly like that happens, I just think it's just personalities. I really do just think it's personalities. It, not it, jiving, not communicating appropriately, feeling slighted for their position in the company, and yeah. it blows up instead of being taken care of. This is a thing I'm listening to um, the Brian Gerwitz. Hope I said it right. Gerwitz uh, book. Gerwitz. And and I feel like that's what's happening there, too. Right? It, you know, that he's talking about a lot of backstage stuff and, and, and some conflicts that arose. And it's just like that communication and like the, the you know, the biggest personalities are in professional wrestling. I say this all the time. And we we're like, you know, why, why are people act crazy around pro wrestling? It was like, what? What what kind of brain does it take to get into this? What no matter what position you're working with this company, uh, especially the people in the ring, right? To do this and put so much into it. So, um, I, I think that just you know, you, you go in and you have an expectation. Mm-hmm. You, when once it's company, you have an expectation. You're the world champion of Ring of Honor, and you have an expectation. And when that expectation gets disappointed and, you know, instead of being thrown in strong, you have a match with Dalton Castle Mm -hmm. and, you know, you you can't you can't give him some matches with like Dante or some, Mm -hmm. you know, a couple of good wrestlers. Uh, Gresham was injured for a few weeks, too. So remember that. Okay. Uh, So so there could have been some more going on there. But, you know, when you say, why has this guy been around for a month? It's like, well, it could be an injury, could be prior commitments. You know, AEW does not bring everybody on. The Bucks and everybody were already on vacation for the week, from mm-hmm. what I understand. Or no, no, the, 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 the Bucks weren't, but Kenny was, and Moxley was, or, you know, things like that. Like, they, on purpose, do not bring everybody in every week, especially the big names, because you don't want to, you know, overdo it. For the most part, it's about expectations. When I did this show, I was expecting that I would get the Hulk Hogan mug, <laughs> and instead, you give me this lame Google well, mug. I don't know. I was, I was uh, speaking of bad decisions. I don't know. It's the one I grabbed. Um, so I did actually. Well, I'm not going to scream and stomp off. So I okay. probably I'll, 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 right. I'll work with it. I mean, I'm a professional. The idea of Hulk Hogan um, riding a shark is actually kind of kind of fun. So. Um, I did actually get to see. That's a good point. I, I got I got to see the, the other beach shop. We drove by it by chance in Orlando uh, last month. Um, I, I went oh. to the one in Clearwater when I picked up this mug that says Orlando on it. What what, what do they sell at the Hulk Hogan uh, beach shop? Um, Hulk Hogan merchandise, sign stuff, you know, oh, um, okay. like just anything with Hulk. I mean, you know, Hulk Hogan has like so much merch over the years, right? Um, so yeah, it's just really a, just just a bunch of shirts that say brother. Yeah, it's a little lost shirts that say brother and say beach shop and things like that. So I mean, it's it's fun, you know, if you're if you're a Hulk Hogan fan. The, the, clerk, the but, clerks there. The people behind the counter have to say brother after everything. Yes. I'm not even supposed to be here today, brother. Can I brother. help you, brother? I'm not even supposed to be here today, brother. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, it, it was, it's, um, yeah, but anyways, um, okay. I kind of, like, I, I, I kind of, I kind of hit it away because my, my, you know, hey, Hulk Hogan is not really, uh-huh. um, <laughs> Terry, again, Hulk Hogan fan, Terry's a dick, you know. Mm hmm. And I actually will not go back to the beach shop because I do not want to. I do not want to support Terry. I will not buy a new Hulk Hogan shirt, mm. you know. Yes. Um, but anyways, okay. uh, um, Elias has a twin brother this whole time. <laughs> That's news. That's probably news to a lot of people in Pittsburgh. That's right. That's right. I, I don't know if anybody in Pittsburgh thought that uh, Elias had a brother, but uh, mm-hmm. I guess he does. Uh, he's got a whole family. Yes. Of, of single name. None of them have a last name. No, they don't. They're don't just, no, they, they don't. They're just, uh, they're, I mean, some, you, you know, in life, you, in the history of people, people like choose last names and they come up with the owners of them. And just his family, just all these centuries just never came, came down to picking a last name. And they're just like, why, why do we need one? They're just, okay, you're Edward. You're Elizabeth. Everyone has a <laughs> first name that begins with E, and that's it. Mm-hmm. It's all simpler, simpler that way. 
they, they all have social security numbers. We can the, the world can figure each one of them out. So, <laughs> so it's, it's you fine. Are, you went really deep on that. Interesting. Um, <laughs> let's see what else we have here. Um, we lost Dave Hebner and Tim White this past year. Oh gosh. Um, as as far as the lost side. Uh, let's see what else we have. A lot of people were let go and brought back with the Triple H era regime, I guess, mm-hmm. maybe. Um, Kyrie re- uh, returns to stardom. Shane McMahon <laughs> went out at the Royal Rumble. Oh, gosh. And then <laughs> was let go the next like day from WWE for some he, reason. He was handing Riddle's ass to him. Yeah. Because he's just that, was, that good at fighting. That was a choice <laughs> he's just that tough and if he's he's gonna only have one or two matches he's got to be over enough to have those I matches guess so. or something i so guess so can, uh, and also word is i think he was in charge of booking the royal rumble uh-huh. so it's just like oh come on come on john moxley returns after rehab and i think is having the run of his damn career oh my gosh she's what a company man yeah, absolutely. You know, I, and not even company man, multiple company man, because he's doing what he did there. I And I mm-hmm. think I, I said this on a post earlier today or yesterday about, about the PWI 500 just came out as of this recording. Uh, I haven't got to re- read it, but I'm seeing a lot of reactions from stuff. Congratulations, congratulations to all friends of the show that are, that are a part of that. Um, and it's just like that guy, I didn't even think about New Japan. You know, he, I, I think he, you know, saved AEW from C- the CM Punk debacle of the summer. Um, so Summer of Mox happened, right? I was uh, now on the timeline of mm-hmm. that. When was it that CM Punk gave up the title? Uh, that First was time. like the June 6th, I think, or something June like 6th. that. Yeah, so yeah. you would, and, uh, Moxley got the title, so so in the time the time frame is July first through June thirtieth, mm-hmm. and in that time frame, Moxley had the title for like a couple weeks. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, he, he he didn't do all the great stuff he's been doing since then. Mm-hmm. So technically. You know, as far as PWI 500, a lot of people are like, it's a it's a sin he's not on there, and I'm I'm kind of looking at like. Okay, I can Moxley? understand that. Yeah, there's a lot, they, I, they I, think I, he should be top ten. Well, I think yeah, he's in there, but also you know, again, he had a good like you know three, four, or five months that he was not involved in wrestling to right. to lose that. Right. Um, and also, I don't I don't know when the cutoff was or it was it the cutoff is like the end of end of June, right? End, or end of June. July, July first oh, okay. through June thirtieth. Okay, is the, is the so year. so and and in that time, you know that that's you know he's been doing stuff with New Japan that's been amazing, um, and mm. just ripping up the indies between GCW and. Def- wrestling and again i mean personally witnessed and, and produced a match um video produced a match that uh that that, that you know him and tom lawler that was just a, the best bloodiest match i've ever seen um i'm, I'm still with I'm, I'm personal match of the year right you showed there. me that right yeah i think so yeah I think we showed that was a that. very good match that was an incredible match look at the old school crimson mask crazy uh, uh, super violent, you know, but mm-hmm. not like a death match, right? And that was that was the that was the fucking bloody art right there, brutal as as Ronnie Nicole, your friend of mine, Ronnie Nicole says. Uh, <laughs> they, they think I think you've had encounters with Ronnie, right? I I have talked with her a little bit okay. online, but I've never. But as she says this, this you know, in paraphrasing, because I can't remember uh, the the uh, wonderful, beautiful, violent art of pro wrestling, and it was encom- encompassed in that match. Mm-hmm. Um, you know kind of thing so uh we did let's see uh well, oh we were in saudi arabia this year for elimination chamber i forgot that happened um keith lee debuted in the aew uh cody left debuted at wrestlemania and and then and then did hell in a cell with a torn pectoral muscle jeez yeah that was uh uh i think we I don't know if I've talked on here, but I've talked with other wrestlers about that, about, um, you know, once you get it torn, uh, the, the majority of the pain is done. Mm-hmm. You're, you're not going to mm-hmm. get, you mm-hmm. know, a lot of further pain. So not that it was easy for him, but that would, but, uh, you know, I, I've talked with one wrestler that told me the, uh, the torn, uh, what, what triple H got the torn, uh, yeah, like, pe- pectoral pec. Yeah. yeah that, that, yeah. that was, a. Uh, 
uh, you know, I, he was like saying, I don't know how Triple H got through a match with that. Mm-hmm. So I'm not, mm-hmm. I don't want to put it down too much, but it, it's a, but it was a very, still a very impressive. It was a hell of a sight when he took off his j- jacket and you saw that purple spot right on his body there. Mm-hmm. And uh, the reaction from the crowd, the reaction Jeez. from the crowd, yeah. And uh, I mean, you still the m- most impressive to me is that Cody in that arm probably lost eighty percent of his uh, use of that arm, mm-hmm. or so, or something like that, mm-hmm. uh, because the the muscle's not attached to anything, so you can't really do too mm-hmm. much with mm-hmm. it. And he was still able to have a banger of a mm-hmm. five. Was it a five star? Uh, I don't know, but it was but still it was, it's really still good. It, it's still like. I think, you know, much like, you know, say the blood and brutality enhances something like Moxley and Tom Lawler, I feel yeah. like knowing that injury, and I think it gives, and I think we talked about it at the time on here on the show, having that injury, knowing somebody legitimately has that injury, now this fantasy of pro wrestling has become extra real, right? Yeah. And, and, and every it, it, time... It's in a hell you, of a cell. It's you not a regular went, match. And, and he didn't do anything crazy. They still had table spots and out of the ring and stuff. Mm-hmm. But knowing that, and not, you know, most of us having no idea, but seeing that bruise, you're like, this can't, you know, yeah. like, and, and, and whether it's just good, him good, good at the, the selling, or if it, I feel like every time he took a bump, that reaction was real. Right, um, mm-hmm. or at least you were bought into like, oh my yeah. god, he's still doing this stuff. He's not half-assing it. He's still doing this with a massive injury that we can see. Right, and you have to remember, a lot of us, uh, myself at that time, we didn't hear about what happened to him. No, all we knew is he had a match. Well, and no, all no, of no. we no, they were they were very open about that. It was news. It there was a big news thing. Uh, going, er, er, we knew days going in that he 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 was injured, and then he got he got re injured while he was working out that week. So let me ask you this: Did WWE tell you? Yes. This? Okay, okay. Yes. Then, that right, was right. part of the story. It was after Raw, so they didn't do anything on TV, but they were on social media saying Cody Rose has this major in- injury. Cody Rhodes will okay. still be doing this match. But to the regular fan, it, you know, if you think, oh, so it's one of those angle injuries. Mm-hmm. I see. It's just an angle injury. Uh, yeah, sure. And then he took that off and look, oh, wait a minute. That is not an angle injury. Mm-hmm. That is a legitimate injury. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Uh, but I get you. Absolutely. So, um, let's see what else here. Uh, we, again, this is a year that we, you know, I'm literally, again, I'm literally listening to this book and talking about how. Uh, it's talking about how you know if 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 Clint Eastwood can be directing, scoring, and acting in movies in his nineties, Vince isn't going anywhere. Vince enjoys this too much; it's his life, and and to be in a world where that has been that he we're going to quote fingers voluntarily stepped away from the company mm-hmm. is still just it's the day nobody thought was going to happen. This wasn't going to happen until he was bedridden. Actually, if he was bedridden, still be a part of it. Um, and it, there, there was a thing actually in that book um, where they they say about when he has been sick and couldn't make it to the shows, they would set him up with a feed and monitor so he could supervise the show <laughs> from his freaking bed. Somebody get me my bedpan. Exactly right. Um, so to, to to be in a world where we have co-CEOs put, put, of... Put, put the title on Austin Theory. Where the <laughs> hell's my catheter? Where we got Stephanie McMahon and Nick Khan uh, and Triple H in charge and, and doing... And doing the Triple H gist of things with WWE, which is what we have been... I think so many of us have been like, you know, we saw the proto, what it could be mm-hmm. with NXT over the last decade, right? Um... Uh, most of the last decade, I suppose. Um, but but I guess eight years, I, I, and seeing what happens when you know he's taken out of it and realizing, oh no, he is the force, right? Um, and we, I think we've seen that over the last month or so of of WWE programming. And at least uh, Vince at least had the wherewithal to give Triple H all those years of running NXT mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. that he has that experience. If he didn't have that experience... He's been shadowing then... him. He's been he's been deeply shadowing him since mm-hmm. he was an active wrestler. 
you know, before pairing with Stephanie, right? Uh, he was, he's just always been there, you know, like from my understanding, he would be there um, just, just in production, just to su- just to see how things work. And I've heard a lot of wrestlers doing that. And I think it's great. How many, how many wrestlers are producers on things now? Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, Maria Canellis is a producer on television. Uh, yeah. you know, worked with ring of honor on the ladies division, uh, this wrestling women's army, you know, it was, it was her and Bobby Cruz. We worked with when we were filming matches for them in Chicago. Um, you know, that, that's incredible, you know, and, and I mean, the, the faces we see in pull aparts that are producers backstage, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Hey, Petey Williams is part of the company. Holy shit. Yeah. You know, I forgot until I saw him last week on a pull apart that happened, you know, or, or, uh, you know, Davari, you know, um, the, the, um, the order Davari. Somebody was just asking me today which one because they liked our tweet today. I was like, no, 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 that's not the one we talked to. Not Aria. I, I can't remember Davari's first name for some reason. Um, but anyways, Sean. I think it's Sean. Okay, Sean <laughs> Davari. Um, I think they gave him like a more uh, a, a more authentic name uh, when he was at WWE with um, mm. was it Muhammad Hassan? I think his name was. Anyways. But, uh, um, and of course, we're not doing this with a live chat room. So, like, uh, everybody's screaming at us corrections that we're not reading right now. Uh, so, uh, Sasha Banks and Naomi, uh, uh, probably one of the most notable walkouts of WWE this year. Yeah. So. They uh, they took their ball and ran. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, and that's been a little polarizing itself. Should they have taken their ball and ran? Should they have stuck around until. Right. Because their contracts were almost up, right? Mm-hmm. So they could have just stuck around for a little while. But, you know, the, we'll talk about a couple of things that were done by people because their the food on their table was not dependent on how they act. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, I'm not saying that that, makes it, that alone makes it good or bad, but, mm-hmm. you know, when you get to that point, then you can just sit there and say, all right, I just don't feel like putting up with this. Mm-hmm. Or I feel like doing this or that or the other, mm-hmm. you know. So that's, you know, Sasha and Naomi just decided that uh, we've had enough and here's our titles and we're going to go. And, yeah, uh, and, yeah. and, and they, they've got enough money and they've got enough things going on that uh, they don't have to worry about it. It did feel like this year was catching up with all the uh, low news cycle of the uh, COVID wrestling. Yeah. We're, only, we're only just over a year of quote unquote return to normal wrestling. What would you say return to normal wrestling was in 2021? Uh, it was that, it was that July, August area area where they okay. started doing live shows again. Okay. Right. Yeah. Like when they returned and, you know, and, and geez, what was the first pay-per-view with an audience that wasn't, you know, WrestleMania they did. It was, it was, yeah. I thought they it was, did WrestleMania. No, no, wait, wait, but they did Slam. WrestleMania. I thought SummerSlam was I think the first been SummerSlam. But they last did, year. they did WrestleMania and then mm-hmm. they went back to the Thunderdome. And then I think SummerSlam and then around SummerSlam they, they went back to full audiences. Mm-hmm. Um, like that was that was the return. That was the the reboot, if you will, of everything. Um, you know, to to that normal th- state, I yeah. suppose. So, um, yeah. Well, I, I, well, I don't know what's on your list, but uh, I'll throw something on there if it's not only already on there. Mm-hmm. Beginning of this year, did you think this entire year would go by? And it's looking like this at already. And Roman Reigns would not lose his title. Mm, well, he was already like what over a year. It, as it was champion, uh, it, right? at that point. It was maybe fifteen months, mm-hmm. somewhere in that range there. And with what we're used to uh, at the beginning of this year, you're sitting there saying, "Hey, he's losing at WrestleMania, probably." No, no. I, I you honestly, I, you honestly I, didn't think he was going to lose at the beginning of this year, the first of January. In your head, you were not thinking probably lose a title in WrestleMania. You no, were not I, thinking I, that. I didn't think we we're in an era where we could do in WWE that long term of a champion. You know, the only ones mm-hmm. that do this were uh, I feel like AEW would have some good six month or so champions. Uh, Ring of Honor was really good about having a year, year and a half champions. Yeah, but I really didn't think WWE was a place that would do that. Yeah, so it's so at the beginning, you, so you thought at the beginning of this year mm-hmm. Roman's going to lose his title at some point. Now it's pretty much. Everybody thinks he's probably going to hold it. Now it's a front. surprise. Now it's a surprise. As we're sitting here in mid-September, if he loses it before the end of the year, it would be astonishing. Absolutely. The only way that happens is if he has a severe injury. Right? Has to be. Has to be. That 
something like that. And, mm-hmm. th- and that's probably the exact reason why we don't see him very much right now. Why no. put him out there every single no, week? No. Why well, he has now, uh, well, he's under a new contract where he's now a part-timer. And after a decade, he mm-hmm. deserves it. He's not, he didn't go do something else, comes back and, and whatever. Like he has been, you know, working his ass off for better or for worse mm-hmm. in the last year, uh, last 10 years. And if he wants to spend some more time at home, you know, he's had a bit of a scare over the last couple of years, you know? Yeah. Um, he did what was right for him and his family going into COVID um, and stepped away and uh, has had the has had the best reinventation reinvention of his life. Absolutely. Um, it's been great. It's been great for all. Like, honestly, it's been great for his whole family. Uh, you know? it is, do you think he's on his way to being like on the uh, Mount Rushmore of WWE champions? Yes. Now he is. Now he is. I yeah. think that was a question mark up until now. Mm-hmm. He did it. He pushed through just like, hey, we all hated John Cena for a while in the middle there, too. Yeah. Right? It was like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We're really kind of shoving this down our throat until we're like, no, we like to taste. I Actually, I'm, 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 I said that, but I'll be honest. I j- Just real quick, I never really hated John Cena. I'm like, I no, see no, what no, they're no. doing. No, they're, no, they're no, no. Well, well, yeah. I, I, I see what they're doing with It was them. that weird thing. Both of them went through that era where yeah. people were booing them when they were faces. I thought they were trying to do the John Cena thing with Roman Reigns. Right. I thought that and they really kind of were. And then, they, then, then they, they turned the corner on it. It was just yeah. like, and it was just a genius stroke. Uh, what they did with him. You know, at the high le- at the at the at the high level, not exactly what they did. Obviously, I you know you don't know, you don't know if they changed John if they turned John Cena heel. It's uh, all of a sudden, mm-hmm. if it would have gone the Roman Reigns route, or if it would have gone the Stone Cold Steve Austin two man power trip route. Think of that just for a little, just for a small amount. Of Think of John Cena as. Roman Reigns role right now. Mm-hmm. John Cena doing that. He would have been he would have done that. And mm-hmm. he would have done it really well. You th- you, probably. Probably. But we got Roman and Roman is doing really very, well. very well. And, and and John has had the career that he had and did very, very well with it and is mm-hmm. on his next phase of that career and and that's great, you know. Yeah. I we good for him. He got to he didn't have to because The Rock had to do a turn here. Hulk Hogan got stale and had to do a turn. John Cena got to be John Cena through his entire career. Yeah. Right? Really? Uh, that's, that's Once he got his footing, he he I mean the evolution, yeah, there was an evolution of sorts, but not but the core was always there. Mm-hmm. Hulk Hogan, you can't say that about. Um The Rock, mm, The Rock you can mostly say that about, but when he turned into like the Hollywood rock, like chicken shit heel kind of thing, Uh like that was like, uh, you know, uh, okay, you know, even when he was like not entirely the super, you know, maybe he was the one being booed, like say, you know, the Hogan rock match or something, right? Or him and Stone Cold and he wasn't, you know, yeah, I guess he was a heel the whole time, you know, when you think about it, because he was, he does, he did the corporate corporate uh that's uh, right he did the corporate champion for a bit um he, but he was, so. he was he was like uh once he became heel with the uh, nation of domination then he turned face then he turned heel again and mm-hmm. then he really went face and that's when he just yeah, shot yeah. Like and then rocket. the hollywood rock was a little bit of a eh, i yeah. don't know yeah um yeah so so the but last... still there was like a back and forth mm-hmm. like cena didn't have that he really yeah. didn't have that like like rock like fit the role that fit for the time Right. And John Cena was just John Cena, you know, after post thugonomics, when he, he he turned and, 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 and got the rocket strap, um, strapped to him. Like he, he, he just John Cena did the hell out of it. He sure did. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, the Bradley, thank you so much. It, it's good to get you on and look back, you know, just take a pause. Well, no, wait, 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 what, what, what? We we're, we're we're not talking about the scrum at all. Uh, you're, I think you're, we've been you almost didn't you. We've like, been talking about the scrum. Okay, well I guess we need your opinion on the scrum. I suppose. Well, I feel well, like I've been would, I would about the scrum every week since this happened. Oh, okay. You know. Okay. Okay. okay but right. what is your opinion of the scrum EVP brawl situation at this point? Granted, and again, this is about I just, I just two weeks you before gonna you're ha- going to hear this. I thought you were going to have it as a big, as a big section because this is like the year catch up. 
Yes. And the, that's I mean, I, and, 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 well, I, and again, I, I was I'm trying to look beyond the pale <laughs> of the scrum situation, yeah. the Triple H situation, Vince situation we're in now. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to be like a reminder, like, hey, some crazy shit happened in the first half of the year. Stone Cold came back and had a match, oh, you guys. Okay, okay. Stone Cold came back and had a match, you guys. That's true. And Vince was on there too. You know, in Kev- 2022, Kevin Owens headlined WrestleMania. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And CM Punk did not. No, he didn't. <laughs> he headlined two pay per views and whined about it. Um, and and uh, and now it's kind of like you you know you're either young enough that you stay a CM Punk fan or you're old enough that you realize Triple H was right. <laughs> You know? Well, isn't that all of them? Because like, there's the. It's like you're you're old enough to have been a Hulk Hogan. You're young enough to be a Hulk Hogan fan. You're old enough to realize that Bobby Heenan was right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and like in real life too, you know. Yeah. Um, but that but that was his uh, little outburst. There mm-hmm. was another case of somebody that sat there and says, "I've got money. I could do. I can do whatever I want here." Well, I think it's somebody and, that wasn't thinking about the consequences. That thought he was in a on a pedestal has yeah. been told for the last year how much he is, um, he how much he is he is is a, a integral part of the success of that company. You know, to the point where he probably thinks I'm going to call out the Riz right now. I'm, I'm, the Riz is out there, and and, and, and right now at the Riz, Bradley, the Riz, Bradley, uh, is, I'm calling you, out the Riz right now. Bradley, do you do you? Cons- I don't hear him. He's a coward. Do you consider yourself a uh, a, uh, a a podcast guest? Um, po- I, I actually I want my Patreon level to be EVP now. Oh, okay, you're, you're, manager, we could change it. We can change it. EVP. Actually, actually, we might do that. Um, do you <laughs> do you do you think you should disclose who your friends are on this podcast? <laughs> Yes, they, they are Riz and, uh, and <laughs> Sorg and Dave and Mad Mike. And, right, right, and, right. And, and Dutters. Uh, no, 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 yes, no. there you go. There right. you go. Okay, now I can say stuff now. Yes, now you can say whatever okay. you want. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just, uh, it's unprofessional. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just somebody that just thought about themselves as much as he's you know, accusing other people of going to business for themselves. And you had just won the world championship. And all you need to do is bitch about something because, because you don't like the headlines, you know, it's just like, come bitch, on. Bitch about something that happened four months ago at that point. Mm-hmm. The, you know, the whole Adam page uh, calling him out. And, and like a lot of people were saying, nobody would have thought to thoughts about it. Mm-hmm. If CM Punk didn't keep on bringing it up. Mm hmm. Oh gosh! What? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm just, just you you're know, just contemplating that. Yeah, just contemplating that. That's in your head. You're sitting there at home, and it's in your head the whole time, and uh, and you and you're just waiting for a moment that you can you know get that out there and get that. That is not a happy, rich person. No, no. You know that is the, that is a person that that uh, money did not make him happier. Um, oh. Getting the success that he strived for did not make him happier. Um, and that this thing, like, you know, continue, it, it, I mean, it's something I think about every day. It's like, I'm doing exactly what I want to do. Is it making yeah. me happy? And, and, and the answer mostly is yes. Um, but, uh, you know, and, and I think that's, you know, it literally like I'm watching uh solar opposites or, you know, from some of the people that do Ricky and Morton, Rick and uh-huh. Morty. Right. And there was like that whole, like I have all the success in the fashion industry, this one character and I am sad, you know, because I'm not with my family, you know, kind of idea. And- like to see that trope play out. Yeah. In real life. <laughs> and these aren't the only, these aren't the only Daniel plane views out there. Daniel plane view. The, 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 from, uh, uh, there will be blood. Okay. That, that that's the lead the lead the person Daniel Plainview. Okay. Yeah, have you seen ever? I have, do not think I've seen this. You have never seen there will be blood. There Daniel be. Day Lewis. <laughs> You've never. I'm getting Daniel Day Lewis shamed over here. You are getting. Uh, oh no! But, but I'll say it another way. I know being in business. I know many folks that have a lot of money, and they're awful, angry people. Mm-hmm. That uh, you know they have to mm-hmm. get the last word. They have to say snide things and stuff like that. And CM Punk obviously seems like he's turned into one of them. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go back a couple stories here. 
Vince, right now, I'll bet you, is absolutely miserable. Absolutely. Absolutely. He wasn't in it for the money. He wasn't in it for anything but the job he was doing. And, uh, I mean, you talk to people, like, the very moment they retire, there's some depression there. Like, what am I going to do with my life? Mm -hmm. What am I going to do with myself? Mm -hmm. And... This is why I've I've said I'm not retiring. One, I haven't saved shit, and I spent my 401k on a business that didn't work uh, about a decade ago. So, and uh, and uh, and uh, and but but still, I could not imagine not doing the things like I'm doing. You know, yeah. I will be. I would be. I need to continue doing this in some fashion as long as I physically can. You know, mm-hmm. like I will find a project. I will. This is just how. You know. And maybe something will change where like, oh, I need to go away from this. You know, it's going to be I am done with this. Not I need I, this idea. We're getting a whole other thing. This idea of working into a retirement so you can actually relax, mm-hmm. you know, which you may or may not get to, you know, is 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 is, is a wild concept. And, you know, and again, like you said, how many people relax get- is relax is a. You know, there's a different lot of definitions to that. Oh, absolutely. Some people might think it's just sitting on a, in a boat all day. I want to retire. Not- I want to retire so I can enjoy my life. It's like, then what you've been doing yeah. the last thirty years? You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's it's that kind of thing. Um, and and now wrestlers have a shelf life, obviously. So they do need to consider something like that. They, they, um, they have a bump card. They, they have a bump card, brother, brother. Yeah. Um, but but again, but also there are many in jobs in wrestling. You know that that yes. you can still have value. So. Uh, and 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 you, you can be, Vince, an, be, and be an agent. It okay. takes a very. This I I I've determined that I will never be rich because I am not willing to do the things that would get me rich. Well, I am. Okay. <laughs> So, Bradley Bucks coming soon. Um, <laughs> yes, but 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 Vince was that guy that did the things to be successful, mm-hmm. and I would say accepted no other option. Yeah. Right. And and did you hear that when Triple H uh, took over and he was having all these interviews and I know one of them he said, "Hey, I I figured out this whole brand new thing. I figured out it's called sleep. Mm-hmm. And, I can, mm-hmm. and, and I get a lot of that now, and I feel great. Yeah, he's talking about driving his kids to school and everything v- like versus that. Right? Vince telling sleep, sleep is the enemy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or sneezing or anything like that. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Um, by the way, I did add. Uh, there will be blood. To my Paramount Plus, apparently has it. Uh, you you need to watch that. Okay, it's at and, and, 158 and, minutes. Jeez, it's a very, very okay. Good all movie. right, we'll we'll put that in there and see what what's up there. So the guy that played uh, Riddler in Batman, mm. he is in that movie and he puts on a hell of a performance. Not as well. Jim Carrey. Not Jim Carrey. Uh, the other the Paul, <laughs> Paul, da- Paul Dano. Okay, I think his name is okay. Um. You're you're going to have many people are really like why the hell have you not watched this movie? Okay, Academy, I'll put it in there. I'll put it in there. Movie. I got listen. I got that. I just got Get Out. I I bought Get Out with my uh, my Amazon uh, uh, my my Amazon money uh, that I get for doing Amazon Day. So uh, mm. you know we 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 got this working. I mean, I mean I'm, I'm, I'm a guy that doesn't up. watch enough movies. I I have right? the, the trilogy of the Lord of the Rings. DVD sitting around, and I got it when I was unemployed. Like I was going to watch it someday, and I haven't touched it yet. Mm-hmm. So, so I, I can't act like I've watched every movie I'm supposed to watch. Absolutely, I keep hitting that. Um, Bradley, yes. What you learn from this year in wrestling so far? Um, I would say the on the Pittsburgh indie scene, the biggest and most surprising change that I saw was that I started wearing ankle socks. See, see ankle <laughs> socks? I used to have the long socks mm-hmm. and uh, I had too many conversations with the runway and just, uh, I just to shut them up. So I was like, all right, fine. Ankle socks there. Now shut up and go lose your rise tag team titles to somebody. Uh, I, meant, I meant something like pertinent into the news of the year and, and the, the landscape of pro wrestling, but I guess oh. that counts, but uh, that's fine. That's fine. No, no, that's um, fine. That's no, fine. it's, it's, uh, I mean, you, you learned a lot and, uh, you, you know, you, the, like I said, the honeymoon phase with AEW is over. Mm-hmm. The, you know, words are being shown. We learn truly who CM Punk is. Mm-hmm. 
you know, and, and learned, and that's a little bit of, uh, you know, there's other personalities, political and otherwise you could bring in, but, you know, when the emperor's clothes type of thing where you just convince yourself that, oh, this guy's right, he's all mm -hmm. right, he's mm -hmm. right all the time, he has to, oh, shit, he's wrong the whole time. Mm -hmm. Wow, mm -hmm. okay, all right, all right, well, you know what, screw that guy. Absolutely. Type of thing. Absolutely. Um, and, uh, and uh, what, it, what did you learn? I, I think we learned that you know nobody's invincible. Nobody's invincible in pro wrestling. Um, no show is invincible. No promotion is invincible. No head of a company is invincible. You know. Um, and uh, what did I say? The only thing that can bring Vince down is Vince, and that's exactly what happened. Uh, absolutely. You know, I've been saying that for a while. So. Well, thank you, Bradley. Heo Bradley on the social medias. Thank you. Thank you for supporting the show. Thank you for being a part of the show, contributor to the show. Thank you for being the e uh, EVP. number one Pittsburgh independent wrestling fan. Oh, please. You were, like, <laughs> you were like the first one to buy a ticket to VCW. So you are literally that's VCW's that's, number one fan. That's Well, that's just because it's Beastman. Yes, yes. And just, Pro, and, baby. And, and uh, I, just a, a shout out to him. Well, uh, he started uh, uh, a very good promotion yes Hasn't he did he? yes he did oh by the way i ran into somebody that worked for vcw in uh detroit and they gave me some very fun um beast man car ride uh stories oh, so i'm just gonna good. put that out in the uh, that idea out in the world All so right. but uh <laughs> so. That, that was my 250th wrestling event wow so congratulations there, there he is all right um i still have blood on my shoes by the way <laughs> I, wear, I like under my under my hiking shoes. So you, um, you didn't put the oxy to it. No, 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 no. They're, oh, well, they, there they, you they, go. They're, they're, they're my they're my uh, the hiking shoes. So I went out on the trail today, and I was like, oh, I looked down. I'm like, ah, oh, there's there's some beast man on my shoe. <laughs> um, I'm gonna get a I'm gonna get the, the scent of a rabbit wolf or something to come at me. I don't know. Oh. Uh, actually, I probably should take care of that. Uh, but anyways, thank you, Bradley. Thank you, everybody for. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, special extra episode. Uh, here on this week off. Hopefully, I will be well rested by the time I see you again. Or uh, who knows? Maybe I'll have an encounter with a sharp plant in Arizona this weekend. Uh, let's hope not. I successfully avoided that last time, but um, I don't know. Uh, I'm I'm going to be with Dutters, and we are uh, notoriously clumsy um, as a pair. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. May mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.